All right, guys, welcome back to Act 8, Part 8. So first things first, I'm going to get some extra gems. We're going to do the second lab. So we actually head back to Act 6, and the reason why I want to go back to Act 6 is I want to purchase some gems before that. It's technically optional, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it, um, as well as uh, try to fit in some extra gems here. So what I'm going to be doing is a setup called Cast One Damage Taken, if I can. Uh, what you're going to need for this is you might need an or well, at least one Orb of Alchemy to purchase the gem, um, or if you've gotten one off of a drop, that's cool too. So what we're going to do is get something called steel skin um and you can bind it to your left mouse button if you want to it's going to be a level one it's not going to be super powerful in the very beginning but it's just going to make it so um it will just absorb some damage for you i want this on basically an automatic use the reason why i don't mention it super early on is because um sometimes people don't like to run something else in addition to like another button but right now i'm going to make it so it casts automatically so we're going to run a cast when damage taken into a support gem and it's going to cost one orb alchemy the steel skin itself is like nothing but right now i need it to be linked to two reds so what i'm going to need to do is actually pull out um, this gem over here, I'm going to try to get two reds and link them to each other. So let's go ahead and attempt to do this. This is random if it's going to work or not, but that's part of Path of Exile and it's part of the experimentation. So first things first is uh, ideally these gloves are so good that I can use my armor scrap on them. This is going to increase the quality, which technically gives it like two more armor than its base, but like it's really not that big of a deal um, for that. It's just so I can have a highest chance of getting four sockets. Okay, so uh, this currently has its... Uh, max number of sockets already on it. Um, what? I could have sworn gloves could have four. Okay, well, anyways. Um, wait, wait, what? Uh, what? Okay, I swear gloves can have four sockets. I'm not crazy. Like, what? I, I, I don't know, man. It says the max number of sockets. Is it bugged? I, I, I don't know. Is there some limit on this item now? that hasn't existed before. Well, anyways, it doesn't matter. What does matter is I need to get specific colors. I need to get them linked. So I need to get two reds and have them linked. The uh, green one, I do not want it linked. It doesn't really matter if it's linked or not realistically, because I'm just going to throw like something on it that it won't be able to be used. Okay. So it got linked. It doesn't matter because, um, so cast one damage taken, how this works. Um, ideally actually move, uh, I can move this one, I think over. What do I not need? I don't really need this elemental damage with attacks on this. I can move it Oh, uh, I can move it over here. Uh, but I can move the uh, other gem over here, and then I can try to get a green in this one. Um, I do want to level this one up. It might... It, you could do different things. You can run Cast One Damage, take an Immortal Call, and keep it a low-level one, which is good for... Uh, a lot of degen, uh, which I think is actually good too. I like cast one damage taking steel skin uh, right for right now, but later we can swap it. It's just so... How this works is when we take a certain amount of damage, that damage is 528. Then it will activate this ability for free. I don't even have to activate it. It removes bleed, and on top of that, it's going to absorb a certain amount of damage. Now, how much damage is it? Well, it's 58 right now because it's really low level, but it will change as we level up. That number will get higher, but so will the other number if I decide to level cast when damage taken. You don't have to go for a really high cast when uh, damage taken support if you don't want to. It's kind of up to you. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get a, a green in here because I need at least one green. Okay, cool. And that will go ahead and suffice for that gem. So now I can still run Lightning Penetration in here just to level it up for something else that I want to use later. Uh, another quick note, I bought this for one Chaos Orb. It's just a belt that I rolled with armor because I want to do the next Labyrinth. The armor that we got uh, as our five link has zero armor, so I want some sort of damage reduction. I paid one chaos orb for this. All it gives us is basically some uh, armor. So right now we actually have basically no armor. Our armor is 113. We have 6% damage reduction for physical. And if I put this on, we have 23. It's a huge difference though uh, for them. All right, so let's go ahead and That's now continue. We're gonna do the lab. So we're gonna go to the Aspirants Plaza or we can technically, we can go to Act 8, which is where we're actually at. And we can just walk through over here. But hello, Stallion, how are you doing? You've been watching my content since a little bit today. Glad to catch a stream. Oh, well, welcome indeed. We're playing a little bit different of a game, but uh, still another awesome game indeed. I'm gonna have to activate my buffs again. And uh, this lab, oh, we just activated two uh, of the same golems. We wanna mix it up here. So we wanna have what, fire? Yeah. There we go, so now we have a mix up of the golems. So you'll see that this steel skin, I like to just keep it active. Um, the reason why I'm using it is to remove bleed, uh, realistically, that that's, that's really good. So we're doing the crew lab. Make sure when you click on this, you click on the crew lab, because um, this one's gonna be harder. It's recommended to be at least level 55. 
but this area here, it's heavily going to be uh, physical damage that gets you killed. So if you die, it's probably because of physical damage more than likely. So we'll start leveling up our steel skin. It's gonna level up really fast because it's a low level one. But you'll see it will activate and it'll basically just absorb damage for us. And it's really excellent to have. Sometimes people like to level up with it through the campaign. Um, but I know some people, they don't want like another button to click. So I just, I don't mention it till later down the line. And this way it's automated. So you don't even have to do it. It just does it on its own. But if you want to manually cast it, you can do it too. And the, I mean, arguably it is better when you manually cast it because you can decide, oh, this boss is about to hit me. I'm going to activate it right now. Uh, but I like it. So I don't even have to worry about it. Um, it just activates when it activates. And if I don't get it, well, oh, well, <laughs> but uh, a lot of even not very high level players they're lazy too. It's just kind of how the game is. Um, another thing I'm, I want to mention, if you want to, you can swap out Nomic Storm boots. Uh, these are actually a kind of a, a bad thing for some players, specifically melee. And the reason why it's bad for melee is because what happens a lot of times with it. Oh, this is a puzzle here. I'm not going to bother solving the puzzle. There are lots of RNG uh, things in this uh, labyrinth, by the way. But uh, the reason why Nomic Storm is something that will eventually drop it off because like, it's just not gonna be super, super powerful. In fact, it's a very weak for stats, but there is no pair of boots in the game that can compare with it for the price and how good it is in terms of giving you movement speed. Ooh, we got some, some orb of alteration. Okay, cool. Ooh, another orb of alchemy, cool. But yeah, you can just get any belt really. I'm still kind of curious to know why. If anyone knows why, please let me know. Why Why can that thing only have three sockets? <laughs> You've been watching me since 1931. Wow, dude, that's uh, some pretty crazy dedication considering I don't think the channel was made then. Oh, another quick thing I wanted to mention. So uh, if you see below my toes right here, we have this like pentagram, um, these blue pentagrams when we walk. Um, that's actually one of the free things that you can acquire by watching my stream or any Path of Exile content creator. Uh, you got to watch for one hour in total and then you can get it. Uh, but what we're leveling up right now is actually more defensive stats. We're getting life recoup. So what this does is uh, the percent of damage we take in now 12% and it's going to go up to 30% of the damage we take is just absorbed uh, for free. Uh, well, over four seconds, it gets uh, to be regenerated as life. And it is so fantastic to have. I'm actually really enjoying this helm. I've never even heard of it on our home. I just kind of stumbled across it. And sometimes, you know, I like to try out new things that I haven't tried out before. We're going to activate our Galvan nice and uh, field. Oh, he died so fast. I mean, this build, top notch. Like, this is, this is my league starter, and I'm so glad that it worked. Like... Actually, I don't think I've ever made a league starter that didn't work. I mean, I... Yeah, I don't think there's ever been a time where I made a, like a starter build. Then, you know, sometimes people theory crap, but I've gotten a lot better at this game too. Uh, sometimes some of these areas can be a little bit tough with this. There's actually a unique item called Immortal Flesh that I actually could definitely recommend. It gives you negative resistances, which we will actually want, um, but not right now. We don't want it now. We're gonna have to open up that. Oh, what do we go? We go here. So be careful on this area. This area can definitely get you killed as well. Oh, is there a switch? Uh, a little hole in the wall. Okay. There are tons of secrets in this labyrinth. Okay, where, where we go? This way? So we're on the second lab. And the second lab is gonna be nice for us as well. The third lab is gonna be kind of up to us on what we wanna go. I like to get the golems early on because getting an extra golem with the extra 100% effectiveness that we're gonna get because it gives you plus one golem and then 100% well it's 25% effectiveness of golem per golem and we will have a total of four golems which equals 100% so all of like the golem buffs huge uh, bonus oh this is not good Whew. that one uh, had the explode remember how I said don't click on the chest here that's why <laughs> even though I click on it uh, Thing is, is that I want you guys not to make the mistake, but I'm also doing it for another reason. I want to see how tanky my build is uh, in terms of like being able to survive. Like, like if I open it up and it freezes me, um, well, technically I can activate uh, one of these, it's the diamond flask. So we're right here right now. So we're just going to go more likely just kind of to the right. It'll be a-okay. 
Ooh, Aspirin Trials right here. And if you need to get flasks, feel free to go and do that. Now, as far as the um, buffs, like you know how we just got that like shrine, you can't unfortunately take shrines into here. There are ways to get shrine effects. You can get the goal, which we will definitely get. This 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 thing called the goal. Oh my gosh, it's like one of the best things that we can get in the game early on when we get to maps. Do we get it with the uh, lightning? Okay, just watch out for that. He can still potentially maybe one shot us. I don't. I'm not gonna test that out though. I'll, uh, that is one thing. Like I kind of test out like some of these chests because I'm like. I'm like 99% sure that we'll be okay on the chest that we open up. I mean, we got kind of like, you know, maybe like 30% HP left. But specifically, I do ne never risk getting hit by Zaro to test things out. That is very bad. <laughs> he hits just for an extraordinary amount of physical damage. And with no physical damage reduction, yeah, you're, you're just dead. But if you want to get like uh, something that has high armor, feel free to go ahead and do so. It'll help out, obviously. But yeah, we might get Immortal Flesh because it also gives us mana regen. And uh, mana regen, uh, that's a good thing. 10 mana regen is, is fantastic earlier on. And also you get like 200 life regen. Our life regen right now, um, well, it's gonna go up quite a bit. We have two, 267, but if, imagine getting 500 life per second at this, this point in the game. That's huge, right? And Immortal Flesh is a very, very cheap unique. You can get it for like one chaos. The one chaos ones though, they'll give you like negative 25 resistance, which as of right now, we do not want. Oh my, jeez, jeez. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip out on that guy. He has got some sort of like lightning field. Um, and if you get hit by lightning and it shocks you, you're prone to potentially taking massive damage. Now, this is the final one. This one is gonna be a little bit more challenging. There's gonna be spikes here. Sometimes there's there's lots of other like things. There's gonna be like spinning things. There's also, uh, you'll see like darts come out. All of those matter. So just don't stand over here is kind of like the, the thing that you don't wanna do. Oh, we are, look at this, look at this. Oh, dude, he didn't even get to like do his slam. Oh my gosh, dude. Like I said, th this build is phenomenal. We, we just precast this, throw on the curse, and it, it just melted like, instantly. All right, so now we're coming up to a different enchant. Remember how before we could get the uh, enchant? Um, this one lets us get avoid being stunned if we've killed recently, or we can get trigger uh, addictive spite. What do these do? Uh, you can look them up. Well, this one's obviously, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna have to resummon our. Uh, we, we don't even use the ice golem yet. Uh, we'll just go ahead and throw this enchant on. It will make it so that, I believe it makes it so the item has an item uh, requires level 53. I mean, it already requires 56 because of a gem. It tells me specifically, but um, sure we can throw it. I, I don't plan to make. It. Honestly, don't plan to make another character to this league. The reason why is uh, since I'm elementalist, I can respec into so much, and I plan to. So the next one that I personally like to get, this one is good. We're gonna definitely be getting that later. But the one that I like to get is elements for now. Uh, next one, we, we're kind of open to multiple things um so the reason why by the way uh this was something that uh, i've seen being asked in, in in other content creators videos as well because like I, I follow a lot of content creators a lot of people are doing lots of different stuff with lightning um and a lot of people are wondering why don't i get shaper of storms i'll answer this question here so our hits always shock we, we will have 100 percent tracks to shock that's not something i'm worried about the shocks from our hits always increase damage by 15 percent we're doing lightning damage that's irrelevant all damage can shock is irrelevant too, uh, for the most part, um, because we always shock anyways, right? Uh, the 25% more effective lightning elements you inflict if the highest damage type is lightning, that can be okay, but like the, it doesn't matter because you still have a cap of 65%. We're gonna hit that cap, so it doesn't matter. With the exception of maybe some like super end game bosses, the number will be a little different. It's not worth it in my opinion. I would much rather get this. We get way more damage. I'll explain this later for, uh, this is kind of for melee. But the next thing that we're probably gonna get is Bastion of Elements. And the last one, um, I'll probably go for this. Now, if I want to, I can respec out of this one and get way more damage if I want to. I, I like the utility that the golems provide, plus they're actually really good. So, uh, in fact, now we can go ahead and leave this area. And we will go and actually do Act 8 now. Uh, but we will also go ahead and go and summon our next golem. So. Yeah, we're in Act 8. Uh, let's continue. And now we'll be able to summon our Ice Golem, and that will give us extra crit. 
Now, we don't have insane amounts of crit damage right now, so to start off Act 8, we go through the Toxic Conduits. But yeah, this is going to be excellent. So now, we're going to summon our Ice Golem, because now we have four Golems, uh, which is awesome. Let's go kill this real quick, and you can see our our um, our life regen is going to go up to 340. Wow, that's great, because it gets increased by 25% per extra um, golem that we have. And our last golem that we will get is going to be uh, obtained through getting a jewel, and the jewel is called the Anima Stone. You can also get an amulet. It's actually really cheap. It used to be kind of an expensive amulet, but now it's super cheap. If you want to get three more golems, you can do it. Um, it's not even a bad idea. In fact, I, I was looking it up yesterday, and I, like, I, I thought, like, I was like, you know, no, no, this is crazy. Uh, it was only one chaos, which is actually probably better than this. So what the Anima Stone does is your golems deal less damage, but our golems, they're not, they're not here to do damage. The only thing the golems actually facilitate are basically a distraction, as well as uh, the, the buffs that they provide. But you'll see, I actually, uh, I'll try to keep this. So you'll see that this thing will still have a cooldown when the cast my damn shaking thing works. But it's just a thing that I like to get. Um, when we start scaling the armor, we can get something called Molten Shell. Um, we can get, we get lots of different things. It's kind of up to us and what we want. So we gotta go to Dodry Cesspool. Ooh, is it Tujin? Is it Tujin? Ah, it's Gwenon. We don't care about Gwenon. Finally, and I'm super on. excited to get Impulsa when we do get Impulsa. Or we can get, uh, we go short a prototype. Uh, there's, a, there's so many things we can get. Oh, this is our, is this is our first Vault Orb. I don't remember off the top of my head. But uh, we'll go ahead and hit this with one of these. Remove Curses on you. So that's actually a pretty good effect. So as far as cast one damage taken, you can level that one up too. You can keep it a low level one if you just want to remove bleed, because like that can be an actually good effect too. Just so, literally you take one damage, it activates uh, cast one damage. Well, it's not one damage. I think the lowest is like 500, which towards the end of the game is like 500. It's going to be like most hits, depending on what you're playing too. Bala Man King, you picked up Elder Scrolls online. Ah, you know what's cool with that game? I think it has no uh, fees anymore, right? Back when I grew up, there were so many MMOs that I loved, but like... Well, I was younger, I, I, I couldn't... Any game that required, like, monthly, like, fees could not play, because I was a kid. Like, Lineage 2 couldn't play it. Uh, I think it was EverQuest, also couldn't play it. Uh, but Guild Wars! Guild Wars 1, man, that was my MMO. I loved that game. I still think Guild Wars 1 was just so far ahead of its time with the double classes. I'm hoping... Well, this game, technically the sign lets you use, like, hybrid classes, but I think for a really cool power creep in this game would be allowing us to select multiple classes. Oh my jeez, that hit so hard. You see my HP? Almost popped. Okay, so we need maybe some more defenses here, which we will be getting. Big damage that we took, but it's fine. We're dealing big damage too, so... It's okay. The only, like, problems that I see with, like, builds is not dealing enough damage. Because defenses, you could guarantee get defenses, but getting damage sometimes on certain builds, it may be kind of more rough because it's like, like, I can just, I can literally go to the tree and get more, like, damage technically, but if the damage is not one-shotting, then it, it's a lot more investment, like, if that makes any sense. Um, whereas the HP, I, I, it's just so much easier to scale. At least in my opinion. And then we're gonna get we're gonna get some more block and stuff, so we're super fine on defenses. We'd actually probably get an upgrade. To be honest, just at plus one lightning of all lightning skill gems, are phenomenally good. Cause like, look at this wrath. I get four levels because helm. Like right now, what is level is this wrath? It's sixteen. We're level fifty nine. All right, we don't need to go over there. Oh, you can get in-game currency and also like at the like premium VIP or something. Okay, that's cool. Lineage 2 actually went free to play. It's so much different though, than what I remember. It almost feels like one of those private servers. I used to play on a lot of like uh, MMO private servers, like WoW, Lineage, specifically Lineage 2. Um, what other games do we play on private servers? There's tons of private servers for games. I don't think there's one for Path of Exile. There's private Diablo 2 servers, like uh, Path of Diablo. I think it would be cool to see a, a private Path of Exile server. All right, so anyways, so uh, how this area works, uh, we're in what, what are you, the Grand Promenade? Okay, so this area kind of uh, lets you go into two different areas. You can go 
into like the sun or moon area. They're basically the exact same thing. They're just like flip flop and the color, instead of it being red, it's blue. So the whole point of act two is actually, or not two, <laughs> act eight is two different parts. And you have like a sun part, you have a moon part, you collect both of these kinder egg surprises and um, you basically move. Oh, did we not? I don't think it's gonna be right here. It actually might be all the way over there. Or here's what the con uh, toxic source, okay. It just looks kind of weird on the map. It looked like maybe it could have been the other way. Gauntlets, okay. Oh, it's a four link. There's the mirror mechanic. We'll, we'll continuously do these. Sewer loafers. But yeah, still basically one shotting, right? Technically, my one shot counts as, like, it activates twice. Yeah, we're, we're one shotting everything still. Mm, totally fine. Loving it. Uh, and if you do want to, if you do get lucky and you get a six link, by the way, because this is something that I was kind of checking it out myself. Right now, you can run a lot of different things. Uh, since I don't have max shock at the moment, you can run Innervate, and it'll give you 20% extra chance to shock. And it's basically like an added lightning damage, but the numbers are higher, but you have to get, you've killed an enemy with a shock recently or something like that. Uh, but this is the last big note over here for the damage recoup. So now, 30% of the damage we take, wait, is it 30? Yeah, tw 12, yeah, <laughs> don't check it out. So now we're in the, the bathhouse. So there's two uh, things that we gotta do over here. The well, first thing is, well, we gotta we should get the waypoint. Just double check it, make sure I got it. Okay, cool. I actually didn't grab it. Uh, we're gonna go through the delirium, see what the rewards are. So how I like to play delirium, at least in the campaign, I like to get to the next stage. So the next stage in our case would be, um, you don't have to do this, but you can, you can kill a, a, an enemy over here. Where is he? This guy over here. Hector. He's dead. And then we can take the wings and we give it to Hargon. But how I like to do the mechanic of uh, Delirium is I like to go up to three. See how it says three? And the next reward is unique. So this is something I actually do like. If I don't like the reward, like it's like an armor thing and like it's, it's doing too much damage, I will just completely skip out on it. Because, like, I don't want to do it. So later in, like, the game, you can kind of fish for more stuff. So there's two different uh, areas we can go to. This is a, well, that's a hideout right there. So in the bathhouse, there is a Trial of Ascendancy. And there's also the Lunar's Corn Course. And there's another area that we can go to. We're going to first do the, uh, the Trial of Ascendancy. To go up. Oh, look, all of our gems just leveled up. Woo! Big power spike over here, nice. I just want to get that to two if we can. Kind of got distracted. Uh, come on. I don't think we're gonna get it. Okay. Goat hide boots, Victaro's flight. Oh, we got a granite flask, cool. So one of the flasks that I think I think is really good, I'm gonna add it uh, over here. We can actually roll it. Uh, so this is called a granite flask. Uh, Granite Flask gives us 1,500 armor. That's a huge amount of armor, by the way, earlier on in the game. I'm gonna roll it to see if I can get something good. I mean, burn is like meh for me. Uh, reduce duration, increase effect. I don't really care for that. Increase armor during uh, flask effects. Okay, let's add another thing. Um, gain a flask when you deal a critical strike. Okay, I'll throw that on, sure. Uh, removing curses is actually pretty decent, so we'll throw that on and uh, we will continue. These other flasks, by the way, um, if you want some early money, like currency, you can sell some granite flasks. Um, we only have one choice, I'm dying. You can sell granite flasks, um, diamond flasks, depending on the roll on them. And don't don't even bother trying to roll the things on it. Like literally, whatever it rolls with, someone's probably looking for some like very niche thing. You could throw it for like one chaos. It's like early cheap money. But here we're coming up to the bathhouse uh, trial of ascendancy. So we'll go ahead and do this. And like I mentioned before, take, take your time with all of these. I'm probably just going to get Mortal Flesh. Uh, I'll get one in a moment, and I'll show you guys how good it is. I just wanted some armor for the uh, the, the lab, because, um, yeah, having zero armor is uh, not advised <laughs> to, to do is with zero armor. I mean, I know I, I didn't even get hit by him, but, like, even though we've died zero times in this game, right? We've died zero times. I, uh, you can you tell, you can tell, I, I'm scared of Azaro still. It's because, like, I, I I've... When I first played Path of Exile, I've died to him. I mean, everyone dies to Azaro the first time that they play the game multiple times. That guy is just, he ain't easy. So we gotta go back here and now we get the Trial of Ascendancy. 
So we have two more and then we're gonna be finished. So now that we've done this trial of ascendancy, we're gonna go uh, over to the bottom. The Necromancer class. Oh, oh, you're talking about that. Uh, I thought you were talking about this game for Necromancer when I saw Necromancer. Necromancer is actually kind of a weak class for the most part if you want to be a summoner um, compared to the other options at being a Necromancer. Uh, like, it's kind of weird. A lot of people that play Necromancer, will they'll even play Elementalist because the the buffs or the, the changes, I should say, because technically, like, Necromancer is still 100% playable. It's just that uh, they move some of the things. For some builds for Necromancer, specifically physical, it's still pretty strong. It, in fact, is, like, buffed um, in some, some departments, depending on what you want to do, for sure. So now we are at the... Oh, we can go back to the bathhouse later. It doesn't matter what you do the, uh, the order in. So we're at the Lunar's Concourse. Since I got this Delirium, I'm going to continue here. But there's a boss. If we go to, back to the bathhouse, there's basically two split options. We can get the blue kinder egg first, or we can get the um, skill point. I'm just going to get the waypoint, and then I'm going to go get the skill point, because the skill point... How I like to do my playthroughs is prioritize... Whatever thing comes up first, I'll do it, but in an efficient way where if there is a skill point and there's an option, we go for the skill point first because then you can do the other content with another skill point, therefore you're stronger, right? That makes the most sense to me, at least. Look at this guy. We're going to melt him. Throw that Galvanic. He didn't even need to get hit by the Galvanic, and he was dead. But you can see when that thing is being activated. So right now, do you see how the rewards is this? I don't care about these rewards. They're like, they don't, they don't get me excited. So I'm just gonna skip out on it. That's how I play Delirium because it does make the content harder. Another. And most of these uh, contracts, by the way, I don't, I don't do heist. I will do one to show you guys kind of how the mechanic works. But the reason why I don't do heist, it is very, very easily, easily and to do and rewarding. And you're for wondering like, well, if it's easy to do and it's rewarding, why don't you do it? Well. It's slow. And honestly, a lot of people feel the same way. The reason why is there's a lot of doors that you have to literally sit behind and wait for like five seconds and it's just multiple times of doing that. I don't know, it's, it's kind of just the way I like to play, but it is very rewarding. And on, on top of that, the main reason why I actually don't like doing it, as you progress in heist, you have to have like, you basically kind of get like different mercenaries, but you have to level all of them up and you have to equip everyone individually with certain things to like min-max a little bit harder on. And I, I would rather just destroy content. But uh, I don't remember if I finished what I was talking about. But yeah, if you connect your Twitch account, by the way, um, you will get drops. Uh, and this is the, the thing that we got. I'll show you guys the other thing later. Oh, wait, what's it have? Mana burn or something? Okay. Felt like we were like, we're completely out of mana. The next thing I want to get is actually a skill point that will give us increased mana. Uh, it's like elemental mastery or resistances or something like that. It gives us 15 to all, and then that will counteract the minus 15 that we get. So we still stay maxed out on resistances. So right now we're in the Lunar's Temple. At the Lunar's Temple, uh, I think we have to get to like level two. We actually get to the uh, boss. Okay, so we got a waypoint here. So you can continue doing this. I want to go back to the bathhouse. The reason why is I already have this map revealed, right? If I already have this map revealed, uh, it's going to be in benefit because how it works is over time, the maps do get reset. And what we want to go towards is, well, you guys can't see on the map, but again, if you if you see the other exit, you can do whichever way that you want. I don't remember if this was Lunar's Concourse. If this is Lunar's Concourse, we can go there. Okay, so that's Lunar's Concourse. The other exit, um, is going to be in an area where we can kill another like boss and uh, the boss will give us a skill point which is actually called the reflection of terror so we go oh wait no it's not not over here uh, maybe is it, is it this way the area that we haven't gone towards aha probably this way oh another thing i should mention is the cast one damage taken um that will use your mana by the way it used to not. That's like a, a change that like, I don't remember when it was that they changed it, but it is changed. What is our actual crit chance now? Let's see. With the, our arc. Let's see. So it's 16 on flat, but what about with all the charges? We're at 20. We don't, do we have any power charges? Maybe like 20 something percent chance to crit. And the thing is, is that like, 
unless we have 100% chance to crit, I still like to have that, uh, your damage rolls lucky values on lightning attacks. It is like one of the best things in the entire game for lightning. Because that means if we don't, if we do crit, okay, it doesn't roll twice. Crit is basically like double damage. It's like 170-ish right now, but it's, it's going to go up. So what's cool with, with lightning is your non-crits are still like bonus damage, if that makes any sense. So we're, we're pretty much perfectly fine on res Oh, we're like way over capped on resistances anyways. Oh, well. Well, I think this gives us an insane amount of lightning res. I think if we remove that, our lightning res will change. But we'll try to get a immortal flesh that is like decent. I mean, we're gonna lose out on a lot of um, armor. We'll lose out on all the fizz damage reduction until we get a replacement, which we, we can get. I, I do want to replace this armor with uh, obviously getting a six link would be pretty decent. We have what 17 chaos. You can get really bad six links usually for like 10 chaos orbs eventually. Like depending on like how the, how far we are in the league, it gets cheaper and cheaper. But uh, I don't really need to grab it right now. It's not gonna. It's literally gonna do nothing for us unless we get cursed with a uh, something. Um, I don't know if I got the waypoint here, so I'm gonna throw that thing up. I'm pretty sure we get to respawn outside, but it's just. By playing this game for like years, I, I, it's just, it's a natural instinct to be like, oh, I'm finding boss throw a portal down, because if you die, you gotta go all the way back. But now, I'm pretty sure they've changed that. But we haven't died, so I don't, I don't know. It's... I usually don't die in the campaign until the very, very, very end, and it's because, like, the way I like to just do the boss is to boss rush, and it's just faster to do it that way. Good damage still for sure, but like that damage recoup is just so great. So now that we've done that, we need a portal anyway, so we're gonna portal out. Now we're gonna go back to Lunaris Cor Concourse. Um, and I'll probably get Mortal Flesh in the next part. Whoops, uh, we wanna go to the uh, Lunaris Temple level one actually. So now that we got that, we can go to, well, I guess I could get the skill point. It's really not that bad to grab that. I mean, I could throw this in to get more life. Actually, this is life in the energy shield right here. So we're gonna round it off, grab these nodes, grab any extra like life right now, because our damage is just through the roof. And our damage is increased. Like right now, I'm pretty satisfied. Like we can do pretty much end game content with the uh, damage that we have, with the changes that I'll be getting. So one of the changes that we'll be getting um, is we'll be getting a staff. The staff gives us a bunch of negative resistance negative resistances but it'll give us triple our damage which is well, obviously phenomenal uh, triple damage but like we can get resistances it's not a big deal the only downside to elementalist most of the like skill tree things you get like a total of I don't know, like 15 resistances on the uh ascendancies i'll double check what it is but yeah it's it's like mandatory in order to get the the, the things you got to get resistances i'm talking about like um this gives you these small nodes. We got what, six, 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 so 18, 18 resistances. So normally like it, like that's a good thing, but we want negative resistances. <laughs> it's fine, we'll get negative like 400. Oh, we got our first map. If you see any maps, pick them up. We're gonna be using them for end game content. That is the end game of this game. The end game is basically randomized maps that can have like a lot more modifiers that are uh, things that you get to design in terms of like, what do you want to do? Like, do you like Delirium? Do you like the heist? Do you like the, like, do you like the little mechanic that's called essences? Nice. It's up to you and what you want to do. At this point, I think we still have essence. We can just slam this right in. Uh, okay. Literally, if, if it doesn't roll life, I don't even bother reading the rest of the thing. It, it needs to roll like life and like another resistance in order for me to want it. Or, I mean, if it has a certain thing that I know, um, but yeah, pretty much, if it doesn't roll life, you can craft life on it, but the crafted life is generally going to be worse than the rolled. But yeah, we're just going to go uh, Lunar's uh, Temple. Eventually, we're going to come up to a boss. Some audio, dang, dude, what the heck's going on? It's the too much fire, burning fire on the ground, overlapping. Makes the audio meme out. This has been a bug in the game for a really long time. It's not really that big of a deal, but it is kind of annoying that it exists. You guys, you see, do you hear that? Like audio messing up. So. I need more mana. Okay, he's gone. We're gonna get this crafting recipe, and then we have to take the. Like I said, we take the giant egg. And get the key. There's two Kinder eggs. 
this red and a blue, we just got the blue. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the Lunaris Concourse. You technically go, you, I think there's another route here, but we're gonna go here and then we're gonna get to the middle of the area. I don't remember if it's before or after this. Let's go down here. And then we're gonna go to the Solaris Concourse, which is basically the exact same thing we did, uh, but it's gonna be a different color. Uh, we, we could go back to town to get an extra skill point. That would make a little bit of sense. But we can do it once we get the waypoint. I have to try to be efficient with my, like, go-backs. Now, for whatever reason, this waypoint is all it's always super hidden. I'll be honest. This waypoint, if you don't find it, don't worry. I don't find it half the time I'm playing. There's another two-stone ring. Oh, there's uh, another mirror thing. Oh, whoops, I don't want to Three additional shrines, great. Oh, this one has double. I didn't read what they did. I just saw shrines and I'm like, yeah, I want that one. So now you can see that like, it's getting all bright. Uh, we can't enter that area and go towards it yet. Because we, we are missing the red kinder egg. The sun, what is that one? What is that div card? Let's do it. Rise of the Phoenix, okay. If you're ever wondering if a div card is worth anything, you just look it up. Also, it's like kind of determined on what the card actually gives you and how many you like need for the item. So unfortunately, we didn't get the waypoint here. I kind of want the waypoint. So there's two different strategies. You can open up a portal and then just die. But I'm, I'm trying to go for that zero deaths. And then you're, you, can, you can respawn in town and then you can take it. That would be a one option. That way we can get to the next area a little faster, but uh, where, is, where is it? Is it over here? It's got, it's got to be over here. Come on. If not, we'll go back at least to get... Um, was it, oh, is it right there? I don't think so. I think that closes off. Alright, it's fine. It's not like this area is very hard to go to. This this area, by the way, is is the same map layout every single time. I feel like the, the waypoint should be like right here. Like this is where it should be. It should, should be a thousand percent chance to spawn every single time right there. But uh, that's not the case. Yeah, don't see it. Okay. Yeah, I don't see it at all. It's hidden. Okay. Well, that's fine. We're going to go to this area anyways. And... We'll go over here, and then we'll complete the quest, and I can get rid of these. Um, I'm just going to drop these off. These could also sometimes... Oh, the corrupted blood in me. Oh, that's what we want. Well, it also removes bleed. Uh, that's good. Oh, 40% less duration, though. Well, I mean, either way, I could probably sell this. Let's see. I'm using my little scanner tool. Uh, if, like, if it's immune to corrupt blood, it's usually worth like one chaos. So I'm just gonna go sell it. If it can sell for one chaos, cool. If not, I, it doesn't really bother me. I'll just give them to other people and friends. Sometimes they start leaking. Like here, you can have most of my stuff. Ooh, yes. Onslaught is good. So what Onslaught does, is it gives us increased movement speed. Uh, does, uh, does it tell us? 20 increased cast speed movement speed. It's like, it's great. So yeah, I like to throw Onslaught as one of our flasks too. And then the Basalt Flask increases um, our um, I actually want to keep this granite flask because eventually I'll drop one of these flasks but at the moment I just like to have two for the campaign this the Victoria's fly is probably worth like nothing because uh, quick server flasks also apply to the nearby allies I'm just gonna put it in for one chaos I used to love this thing uh, for my animate guardian but right now uh, animate guardian uh, is not gonna be able to benefit from it because it used to give you a buff for movement speed but it doesn't okay this is this is double uh, added damage, 47 though. It's kind of high level. But yeah, some of these I just sell for one chaos, and if they sell, cool. Like I said, if not, no worries. Uh, let's see. I don't really need the elemental resistances for this, but that's right. Um, oh, another thing that I should probably talk about real quick is what's called affinity. So if you right-click 
on your thing, you can see where it says affinities. You can put currency and you can check this box. And what that's gonna do, I have a, what's called a stash tab for currency, but all, what this means is I don't have to take this item and go to the stash tab. I can hold control and then just left click and it's gonna put it, I don't even need to be in this tab and it's gonna go right to that exact tab that's in that correct affinity. It makes the game so much faster. Alternatively, I felt like they should just had a button that just says absorb affinities and it'll just absorb everything. Just that would be really you. awesome too. But uh, yeah, let's go talk to um, all the people. It's one of them. Watch it gives us the uh, the book. It gives us a skill point. Go with courage. The Hargan. Oh, he gives us a reward. Um, I think we needed cold res. I don't remember what the other one was. There you go. Uh, and so this one can actually be worth something. Uh, this one, Conqueror's Efficiency is usually the only one that people want, I would say. Actually, they're all worth one C. I'm checking them all real quick for you guys. Don't get this one, though. This is these two that are worth something. This is Increased Effect of Curses, Blast Applied, Have Increased Effect. Okay, that's not too bad. But yeah, uh, Conqueror's Efficiency is really good. Um, I recommend getting this one. Um, it's, it's, it's good. There's also Replica Conqueror's Efficiency, but what it does is, yeah, it doesn't even have rolls, but it's uh, Increased Mana Reservation C Efficiency of Skills. It's really good. We can actually benefit off of it. We can put in two uh, skill points and then we can get it. Uh, what it does is it reduces like the mana that it absorbs when we use our abilities. Great stuff indeed. All right, let's continue to the Solaris Concourse, get this done. And uh, we can actually go from the Solaris Concourse. Okay, so we just got this. And we're gonna actually go and wrap around to the other side because the other side has another uh, skill quest called the Jebli. So, in the Solaris, we do also want to go to the, um, like, Solaris Concourse area, where it's like the, the Solaris Temple Level 1, just like the Lunaris Temple Level 1, we got to go to Level 2. But, we're going to go in the other direction, so it fully loops, since we already got the waypoint here, and there's a quest that we need to do. And later, how I like to play is we don't even have to activate Flask, they automatically activate, and it's fantastic. Damage is still looking pretty good. But if you're feeling like your damage is lacking, hey, get some more damage. Because sometimes, you know, like, you'll have different gear than me. You know, that's just normal with any action RPG. But at this point, like, there's nothing that I have that's expensive. And I, I, I purposely, like, I could spend 17 Chaos and get a huge upgrade, but am I going to do it? No, because I don't want to give you guys the impression of, like, do my build you know, so much better because I spent, like, extra, you know, money. I got lucky. I mean, I I'll admit, at this point, like, this is pretty nice. This is pretty nice in terms of how much, uh, like, currency we have. But, like, in, s in terms of, like, what I've spent on my build, like, everything's basically under one chaos. This we got basically for free um, as a drop, but at the same time, if I wanted to get a five link, it's just a cu couple chaos. I mean, our, our, our item isn't super amazing. Actually, I think it might be down this way. But now we know where the other area like kind of ends up. So I'm guessing it's over here. Was it really not here? It's really unlucky. Okay. So maybe it's up and to the left. So yeah, we want to go. I know it's got to be up and to the right, well, at least via that picture. Unless it's in that little sliver, it's probably. I'm guessing it's this way. Oh, we have the bridge. There, is there no connecting spot down there? Because that's the bridge right there. It might just be a little sliver at the bottom. We're gonna go and hope it's there. Okay, come on. No. Not here at all. It wasn't there. Alright, well, let's just. We can go do that, and we can actually go through the other route and get there that way, too. Sometimes. When an area has two different exits, it can be faster to go one way, but it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, around the gate. Okay. Ooh, three chromatics, nice. Alright, so we're going to do the Solaris Temple, then we'll go back into the Gemling one. So as far as the next point, uh, just more life and energy shield. Not much energy shield, we only get 10 from it, but we'll scale a little bit more energy shield later with something called Discipline. 
We get Discipline and Determination. We're gonna be heavily relying on Energy Shield as well as Life. So we're gonna have no evasion. And not before. Oh, you know what? It's from the Solaris Temple where we actually need to go backwards. Okay, wow, look at all these gems leveled up. Massive. Another. Oh, we got a contract, okay. So the contracts that are worth, like, actually uh, getting something are gonna have Deception. I believe that's still, like, the expensive one. And some of these can be worth a few chaos apiece. But after this, just two more acts. We're at Act 8, and there's 10 acts total. And then we'll do some, like, endgame like, content as well. have the waypoint for that one. I think we... Oh, wait, is it from two? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. We got uh, only one choice. Beasts. So you have to... This one is going to be a super, super tough one, but it's going to probably reward us with some good stuff. We'll do it after we get the next, like, gemling thing. We'll get some more actual life, some extra mana. Another. A frozen cabinets map. So yeah, again, pick up all the maps. Just zooming. That's fifty nine sixty two. Okay, so we're kind of like over leveled now. Go, the boss is here. I need more mana. Oh. See, this is where I was thinking about like immortal flesh. Like, see where like the mana could be kind of a little bit better. Oh. Definitely be a lot, a lot nicer. Getting an extra uh, basically tan mana region. There's a crafting recipe, but it's not a big deal. So we have two optional options. We can go from here and get there. I'm going to go through the Toxic Conduits instead. Um, oh, the Quay over here. So, there is another quest that we will be doing. It's like a love or something. Oh, love is dead. Okay. So we'll go from here. And what we're going to be looking for in the Quay is an Ankh. And it usually will be like across, hopefully, oh gosh, I'm so glad we got this. So there's the Ankh. And now we're going to go find, um, there's, there's a little small area. This area is huge, by the way. And I'm so glad that we got it on the first one. But like, sometimes like this item in particular, it could just take a long time to get. because there's just so much. But there's actually two exits in the Quay too. We wanna go to, let's see, the resurrection site. Gosh, I got, I got lucky on this. This is probably like a really, really lucky run for the speed runs. So yeah, we're gonna get to the resurrection site. This is after you collect the Ankh, by the way. You go here. And if you guys remember, that's the guy that was like locked up. That was her lover that we saved. Well, the first time we save her, she's like, thank you for saving me, but hold on, I need you to do me another favor. And she needs you to get her boyfriend, but her boyfriend is actually a zombie now. He's been uh, converted or, like, inflicted with some sort of, like, demon powers. So we gotta kill him. Deleted him so fast. And then, so we'll talk to her later. That, that quest is now complete. The other exit will usually be like in the opposite direction of this one. So it'll be probably in the top right. Pick up 
pick up all the chisels that you see. That'll be used later for maps. Improves the quality of the map. For more stuff. Down here. This is one of my least favorite areas because in terms of the minimap, it's very confusing where things are. Like, specifically, it's just the quest with, like, uh, Love is Dead. It's not the most beginner-friendly. Spell Echo. 5% quality. 5% quality is kind of meh. Later, we'll get our stuff up to 20 quality. There's lots of different ways to do it. You can get Gem Cutter's Prism to upgrade the quality. Or you can get your gem to level 20 and then use one um, gem cutter prism versus using 20. It puts it down to level 1, but you get 20 quality with it, which is a huge change. You get a decent amount of little DPS, about like 10 percent 10, 10 ish on most things, depending on what the, the gem is. So you can upgrade your, uh, not only your skill gems, but also your uh, uh, support gems as well. Which is excellent. So notice it's only if I really spam until we can run out of mana. When I'm ready. We'll do some of those vault side areas later. So the thing that we're looking for right now, now that we have both of the eggs, is the, the, the skill point quest, which is going to be the Gemling Legion. Basically, it's just a, a boss that we gotta kill. Here we go. Did you even notice that there was an elite right there? I didn't. <laughs> Absolutely melted. Super fast. We got an extra book of skill point. And then we talk to uh, one of them. Because it was her. Bam. Got that. Clarissa wants us to talk to her too. Bam. This one gives us uh, respect points as well. All right. So with four skill points, wow, we got we got some options here. Okay. So I mentioned Immortal Flesh. What time is it? We're at 52. Okay. Well, let's just finish this act. Um, I, I can get the the Immortal Flesh later online, but all I would get is a 15 uh, elemental resistances if I was getting that right now. Um, but what do I want to get? Uh, I want to round off all the life because I'm really happy with her damage. This is going to be great. Oh, actually, this gives us life and uh, mana cost reduction, right? Oh. Oh, this is increased mana. Uh, reduced mana, uh, mana cost of skills. I'm going to grab these two right here. And then I will also... I mean, if I want to, I can grab this one over here. It's not like a bad node. Uh, we can also path out to here because eventually what we're going to do is get Whispers of Doom, which can apply two curses instead of one. There's also some extra energy shield and life here. That's great. Uh, to get as well. It's kind of up to you and what you feel like. Do you need more damage? Our current shock chance is what? Um, let's go to our current shock chance. chance that's chance of ignite. Where's chance of shock? Oh, 65. I get increased shock chance if I want to, and then I also could get the uh, mastery where um, the shock gives us 15% extra effectiveness. I mean, I'm pretty satisfied with my damage. To keep it that way, though, you still need to kind of get damage. As you progress, you'll get more and more. Uh, the enemies will get more and more life. So getting like an extra 30%. The penetration, it's it's good now. Later, it will kind of fall off because we're going to have them have insane amounts of nega res. I'm just going to go and put this point in here just because I'm really happy with my damage. Um, other things that you could think about is the jewel sockets. In fact, uh, we could get the, we could get that jewel socket right now. It's, it's two points for four percent reservation, but it also gives us uh, reduced mana cost of skills, which could actually be used because um, you know, mana, mana issues, right? Uh, we can get mortal flesh that will solve the mana problem. So I'm not going to put points into mana right now. Uh, but uh, what would I actually want? I, again, you, it's up to you on what you want. Uh, I do plan to get a mortal flesh. So I'm going to do this before I forget. Um, so. You can also, oh, you know what's an actual, another one that's really good that we actually can benefit from right now? We can get the increased effect of non-damaging ailments. So what that does is shock doesn't actually, shock technically makes the target take more damage, but it's a non-damaging one. A damaging one would be like uh, ignite uh, as an ailment. But uh, anyways, yeah, let's go back to the Solaris Concourse. And we're gonna go right back down. So you can see if the area takes, if you take too long in an area, it will reset. But like this area always is the exact same layout, so it's really easy. The uh, the exit is always going to be right here. And then that will basically round off the uh, 
Ooh, there's a delirium. I'm gonna snag this when real quick. Ready, just just see what it is. Nice weapons. The very skies themselves. When all uh, we're about an hour in, yeah. So we, did, we did the lab too, which is kind of extensive by like 10, 15 minutes. So pretty solid, like 45-ish minute, uh, like act with the like 10, 15 minutes of the uh, campaign. Uh, I mean uh, the labyrinth. So like I said, I like to see once it's three, we get to see. Oh, it's currency. We we do this one. Like I said, the currency is, is the one that we, the only one that we really care about. To be honest, there's other ones that can be okay, but. For me, and for right now, that's the one I like. The rest I skip out on. If it was like weapons or armor, I'd just be like, okay, I don't care about it. But what I love with Ark is like, it just you can beam enemies from so far away. It's awesome. Two, can we get three? Ooh. Oh, we can do this. Oh, we didn't do the... Uh the mechanic, the the Lake of Calandric mechanic. I don't think we're gonna be able to get to three. There, sometimes there's literally just not enough monsters. But I'm gonna try. Like, like it's an extra, like a currency reward. I mean, generally how these things work is the further that you're away from it, the better. Like the uh, the thing. I just don't know if there's gonna be enough enemies. Yeah, we're probably done on the amount of enemies. I think the Lake mechanic was somewhere around over here. There it is. All right, so we're just gonna skip it because there's no way we can get another one. Schuler's orb, a cluster tool. Okay, nothing too special. I can check out this wand though. Oh, an annulment. These can actually be worth a little bit. Let me double check what these are worth right now. They're worth like five chaos orbs. Cool. That's about like a whole entire build worth about like that. Like. <laughs> Uh, and see if we got anything good. A uh, decent amount of increased spell damage. So to give you guys the values of how good the plus one to all lightning sk skill spell gems is, uh, it's about 100% increased damage. Um, depending on like the situation and, and the scale, but like because it's so good, because it increases all of our things, it's just overall a really nice benefit. I like to keep this, you can run this almost until you, you basically get to maps and you can still run plus one to levels. It's just that good. Oh, we need one more to do the, the, the thing. I want to do one of the things in here. Cause we're at 57, okay, because we can do the boss real fast. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go to an area, because after we do this, this is this is the, the, uh, the end, this act. What we can do, and I, I actually haven't shown off this mechanic yet, so we can click on, oh, can you not control click on this? Uh, we'll have to reset the instance here. And I don't have the waypoint. Okay, it's fine. I want to show off the, the lake mechanic, so we're going to do this. So, and I haven't shown you guys this mechanic. So if I hold control and I click on the area that I want to go to, in our case, it's going to be the um, Solaris Concourse, and I hit new. It's going to make a brand new area, so it resets the entire instance. And this area will always be to the left here. And then we can make a new harbor bridge. So we're making a new bridge area. And we're just looking for that, that mirror of uh, Calandra. There it is, it's right there. The, like the Lake of Calandra, like mechanic. Okay, here we go. So whatever it is, cannibals. Okay, throw that in. Ooh, that thing did a decent amount of damage. So certain damage over time can be pretty nasty. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this lake. This will be pretty tough though. I can, can already tell ya. I'm sure you hit up the uh, shrines. I mean, I know our damage is going to be like through the roof, but how about the enemies? <laughs> but there is a valid strategy of Path of Exile. Just hit them so hard before they hit you that it doesn't matter. Oh, it's a currency. Give me something good. <laughs> Waiting for that exalt drop, man. Actually, exalts aren't even the thing anymore. It's all about divine orbs now. Let's get these shrines. I need more mana. So like I said, that... I think we'll solve the mana problem. The mortal flesh, without having to put points in a mana, because like eventually like, mana is like irrelevant. You can get the uh, the node on the elementalist ascendancy for plus one percent regen when you expose an enemy, which you basically get for free um, in terms of like activating it. Like it's really easy to activate exposure on an enemy. So I guess with the shrines, you don't get the. Uh, Oh, here we go. Ah, uh, little like chest reward 
So I guess it's good to start off with the shrines. Yeah, we'll, we'll eventually get the goal. So some, so is that rings? It didn't even drop a ring. It probably actually did, but like my loot filter is like, this ring is so bad, you don't want it, mate. It's fine, I don't think we're gonna get an upgrade via this belt anyways. The reason why is because like our belt's pretty solid, I spent one chaos on it. And I'm gonna spend like two or three chaos on, on a better immortal flesh. Ideally one that has not super negative resistances. I will eventually get one that has a lot of bad resistances later. Throw that galvanic thing. There. Get some armor scraps. And what did we get? Nothing? Okay. Where are we right now? We got two two more, I think. Oh, there's Calandra. Wait, this is our first time we we're gonna see Calandra for the first time ever. And I don't know if she's gonna be a boss. I don't I have no idea, but I'm excited. Ooh. So this is Calandra. That okay. Because they showed it off in the trailer, but like we didn't know is that going to be Calandra? I mean we'd only assume so, but I wanna know what happens. Ooh, ancient etchings too. So they prison her, imprison her? Okay. We'll listen to it. As if I am making the choice to turn around and come back. In some cases, if I build up enough speed, I can make the transition take several minutes. Yet, I remember nothing of my time outside. Is this a real prison? Or one whose walls reside only in my mind? What happens to me in those moments I cannot recall? Okay. Huh. So someone else is more powerful than her, I'm guessing, if she's getting imprisoned here, right? That that could that would only make sense. Watch out for those little pop. Thanks for cold damage. All right, so we cleared out. Uh, I want to say we cleared up. Oh, there might be one area if we go up. We will go clear up that area if there is another area to clear. And if not, we're gonna go see what that thing is. There's something else here. Oh, it's the last uh, part of the strong box. So the strong box also doesn't have a reward chest. Can also, if you want to get more life, you can just literally type in the word life. And there you go. Easy, easy way to find out some more life. So um, we can get, uh, what is it, uh, regen life uh, as we move. But I usually don't like to go for that. I like to go over here. I think the, the next plan is we can we can path out over there. We can get the jewel. Um, I will check out how much the anima stone is because getting another golem uh, would be actually really great as well. Which would require... Actually, we could just get a jewel socket. It's not like I'm not going to get this. Like, we're 100% getting this jewel socket, and we're definitely getting this jewel socket. It's just a given. Uh, I might as well get that extra, like, intelligence right now. But I'm excited, because um, we will see what this... Re what is this reflecting miss? Is this the boss? Generate a ring or amulet. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so this is our first reflection. So this... We, we don't put anything in, right? Okay, it just it just generates it. So, and we get to pick one. One copy may be kept, the other must be returned. All right, so this gives us, yo, you guys can see it perfectly fine. So we have minus 100 life, but we have increased spell damage, a reduced rarity, and increased elemental. 64% is pretty good. I mean, 100 life is great, but, oh. Get rid of that thing. Um, I mean, this one over here, I mean, I could use my, can I, can I use this, this thing to scan? I could check out how much it's worth. So, this one over here, I mean, I don't think anyone would look for this. I mean, I don't think this is gonna be worth anything really. It's like 100 life and like getting these stats, is like whatever, it's not really worth it. Um, getting 64% increased elemental damage is pretty decent, but minus life, no one's gonna really want that for the most part. This one is probably terrible. Um, there's, no, there's no build to my knowledge unless we're running like Chaos Inoculation that's just gonna be like, I don't care about life. Um, I don't think anyone's gonna want this. So I'm just gonna take this one. But I, again, it's not really going to be something that I think is going to hold value. But that's cool. We, we got to see our first uh, mechanic. I think this is it. Is, this is the water. Okay, so that, that's it. That's it for the lake. All right, cool. I'm glad we got to see the mechanic. That's like the, the brand new thing that you're supposed to be able to get. So I'm guessing we get to get more of those as we get deeper in uh, the game. All right, I got you now. 
Let's go. We're, we're off to fight the, the, the boss of this act. Ooh, all the golems leveling up all at once. It's, it's great. All right. So here we go. Here's the Lunar Solaris. We go to the Sky Shrine, and we got both of our Kinder eggs ready to be popped. Put them inside here. We have to kill Lunaris and Solaris. So as far as this boss fight goes, they actually like kind of fight each other. It's a really cool looking boss fight. I'm gonna curse both of them and throw that galvanic field on one of them. So kind of just attack and move. There's like a laser beam, some stuff that falls, but our damage is so good. Ooh, that's really solid. I'm running out of mana. Because <laughs> it's the only time we're going to run out of mana is like on a boss fight where we have to continuously hit the enemies. Okay, so we're at the Blood Aqueducts. Nice. But that did take some extra time. I don't know, it was like 5 10 minutes to do that extra league mechanic. But this is a good place to get XP if you need XP. The reason why is because it's just a bunch of enemies condensed and like with arc the way it works, you know, spreading via the, the zigzaggies. I love it. Perfect. No, uh, no, uh, incursion mechanic. Remember, pick up all the uh, maps. You're definitely gonna want them for later. So it's basically a straight way uh, up with, with some zigzags in there. Watch out for those. Those will pop. Strong boxes. I wonder if when we get the uh, passive tree, if we get the strong boxes, because that's what I like to get. Five strong boxes is like kind of nice. So we'll have to wait and see, because that could be a huge buff to strong boxes, which is my favorite like mechanic because you don't have to really read it. Well, I mean, if if you want to, you can identify. Like, if you want to, by the way, I should have probably mentioned this. You can identify things, so it just ignites us. But honestly, the only ones that are like worrisome are freeze when you activate or like it'll detonate the corpses that are nearby. And what I do is I just open it and I move. Obviously, if it freezes us, that could be still pretty bad. Uh, but we're going to be immune to freeze later, so it doesn't matter. I won't be immune to shock, too. So that'll be great. And so, I just talked to everyone in town. And we are now at Act 9. So we were almost finished with the game. We just got Act 9 and 10. Then we're done. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Drop a like on your way out. And I'll see you guys on Act 9. Part 9, very soon. Take care. Peace.